In this video, we are going to look at some sample practice questions on AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. And this exam is a great starting point on AWS certification journey for individuals with no prior IT or cloud experience but want to switch to a cloud career or for the line of business employees looking for the foundational cloud literacy. And also, I will share some AWS documentation so that you can do the self-study, understand the concepts and also validate the answers yourself. And now let's directly jump on to the questions. Question number 156 part 16. The question is asking you which AWS service should you use to upload and deploy web application in a simplified and fast way. Your options are option A Amazon CloudFront, option B AWS Elastic Beanstalk, option C AWS Direct Connect and option D AWS Transit Gateway. And the correct answer is option B AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So let's understand what is AWS Elastic Beanstalk on this AWS documentation. Here you can see the first line says that it is used to deploy and scale web application. AWS Elastic Beanstalk is used to upload and deploy web application in a simplified and fast way. And while you use AWS Elastic Beanstalk, you can actually focus on writing code instead of provisioning and managing infrastructure. And friends, this is a very important point here. You can see that AWS Elastic Beanstalk, while this service takes care of provisioning and managing the infrastructure, you as a developer can focus on writing code. And also you can see that this service helps you select and retain full control of the optimal AWS resources for powering your application. You can also use the adjustable settings to scale your application for handling peaks in traffic while minimizing cost. And also when you scroll down, you can understand how it actually works. You can also watch this video, just a two minute video, but it will help you understand Elastic Beanstalk. And you can also understand what are the use cases of AWS Elastic Beanstalk. For example, as we discussed, you can use this service to quickly launch web application. You can use it to create mobile API API backends for your application and also re-platform critical business applications. And not just that, you can also use the documentation to really understand how to get started with AWS Elastic Beanstalk. All the documentation is given here. And as always, I will leave the documentation links in the description box. Let's move on. Question number 157. The question is saying which duties are responsibility of a company that is using AWS Lambda and you have to choose two correct options. And the given options are option A, security inside the code, option B, selection of CPU resources, option C, patching of operating system, option D, writing and updating code, and lastly option E, security of underlying infrastructure. Now let's check out the correct options. First we have option A, security inside of code, and then we have option D, writing and updating code. So basically these both are your responsibility or the company's responsibility who is using AWS Lambda. And in case you want to understand what is AWS Lambda, this is the documentation. Here you can see AWS Lambda helps you run the code without thinking about the servers or the clusters. And in case you're coming from the Microsoft Azure background, the counterpart service for AWS Lambda in Microsoft Azure is Azure Functions. Okay, so now let's understand a little bit more about AWS Lambda. It's a really great service as it helps you run the code without provisioning or managing infrastructure. Simply write the code and upload the code as zip file or container image. And also you can automatically respond to the code execution request at any scale from a dozen of events per day to hundreds of thousands per second. And not just that, it also helps you save the cost by paying only for the compute time you use by the millisecond instead of provisioning infrastructure upfront for peak capacity. And also my friends, it also helps you optimize the code execution time and performance with the right function memory size. So I hope you understood the gist of AWS Lambda. First of all, it helps you write the code. You can just focus on writing code. You do not have to provision or manage any infrastructure. You just simply write the code upload your code as a zip file and run the code. And then my friends, this piece of code can act on various execution or various events that occurs. So basically a event driven code. And the real beauty of AWS Lambda is it really helps you cut the cost because you don't have to pay for the infrastructure upfront. So for example, let's say you have deployed a piece of code that runs on some HTTP trigger. And friends, in this setup, you only have to pay for the function when it's actually running. Or you can also say the compute time the function is consistent 
consuming and it's a really critical point because you don't have to pay for the infrastructure when your function or your code is not running and similarly my friends you can also understand how this aws lambda works so basically aws lambda is a serverless event driven compute service that lets you run the code for virtually any type of application or backend service without provisioning and managing servers you can trigger aws lambda for over 200 aws services and software as a service applications and here you can also understand how can you use the AWS Lambda in various application for example if you want to use AWS Lambda in file processing or stream processing web application IoT backends or mobile backends all of the documentation is just right there so out and out a really wonderful service from AWS many application I have seen extensively use AWS Lambda now let's jump on to the question number 158 the question says that which of the following statements accurately describe a function of AWS secret manager and this time also you have to select two correct options and the given options are option A encrypts authentication information in the code ensuring that it is unreadable that is not in a plain text and then we have option B replaces the need to hard code authentication credentials in the code option C make it possible to include an API call that retrieves authentication information from a central repository and then option D automatically rotates and updates the code in the application build ensuring the repositories are kept up to date and lastly option E facilitates the embedding of authentication information in the code during the runtime so what are the correct options could you guess it think 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 for a moment and let me know in the comment section it's very essential my friends that you read the question along with me read all the options understand them and then try to answer before I reveal the answer because this is the only way that you will gain the confidence to appear in the real exam so now let me reveal the answer the first correct option is option B replaces the need to hard code authentication credentials in the code and then the second correct option is option C makes it possible to include API call in the code that retrieves authentication information from a central repository now let's check out what AWS has to say about the AWS secrets manager here you can see it says it centrally manages the lifecycle of the secrets and you can use this service to securely encrypt and centrally audit secrets such as database credentials and API calls and further it helps you to manage access to the secrets using fine-grained AWS identity and access management and resource-based policies and also you can use AWS secret manager to rotate secrets automatically to meet your security and compliance requirements and not to forget this service replicate secrets to support disaster recovery scenarios and multi-region application you can understand how it works here you can see that AWS secret manager helps you manage retrieve and rotate database credentials API API keys and other secrets throughout their life cycle and friends from the exam point of view please note that AWS secret manager is not just related to the password it also helps you manage the database credentials API keys and other secrets throughout their life cycle because in the real exam the AWS can change the question and you can get the question in different flavors you might get database credentials or API keys or other secrets so keep in mind what all services that AWS secrets offer you and you can also understand and what is AWS secret manager you can watch this video here understand the use cases for example it helps you store the secret securely you can manage access with fine-grained policies automate secret rotation and also audit and monitor secret usage and with that let's jump on to the question number 159 which says which of the following contribute to the total cost of ownership of a workload running in the AWS cloud you have to choose two correct options the given options are option A hardware maintenance option B power and cooling option C storage cost option D space for the data center and option E network cost and the first correct option is option C storage cost and the second correct option is option B network cost moving on with the question number 160 question is saying that which feature of AWS reduced your total cost of ownership and the given options are option A AWS budgets option B trusted advisor option C AWS total cost of ownership or TCO and then option D AWS redshift and lastly option E AWS cost explorer so which is the correct option have you chosen maybe you have gone for the AWS budgets well it's not the correct answer it doesn't help you reduce the cost or have you chosen AWS total cost of ownership 
Well, this is also not the correct option. AWS Cost Explorer. This is also not the correct option. The correct answer is option B, Trusted Advisor. And why this is so? Because AWS Trusted Advisor helps you optimize the cost, increase performance, improve security and resilience, and operate at scale in the cloud. The Trusted Advisor continuously evaluates your AWS environment using the best practices checks across the categories of cost optimization, performance, resilience, security, and operational excellence and service limits and recommend the actions to remediate any deviations from the best practices. So you can use all this documentation to learn about AWS Advisor. You can learn the benefits of the same. You can see the Q&A or frequently asked questions on AWS Advisor. For example, how does the AWS Advisor aligns with the best practices? You can understand them all, how to prioritize the important recommendations. All is given here in this documentation. And the good part is you can also understand what are the use cases. So for example, you can use AWS Advisor to optimize the cost and efficiency. You can also address the security gaps, improve performance, improve resilience, and also track service limits. So friends, I'm sure that all of you who are already working on AWS or who want to work on AWS must encounter this AWS Trusted Advisor because cost, cost is always on the top priority of any company or organization. So those were the five practice sample questions for today. I hope you like the questions. In case you have any doubt in any particular question, let me know in the comment section. I will surely try to help you out to understand the concept. And also my friends, one sure short way to increase your knowledge is to read the AWS documentation read our blogs on these similar topics. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.